the State Barrier Fence of Western Australia, formerly known as the Rabbit Proof Fence, the State Vermin Fence, and the Emu Fence, is a pest exclusion fence constructed between 1901 and 1907 to keep rabbits and other agricultural pests from the east out of Western Australian pastoral areas. There are three fences in Western Australia. The original number one fence crosses the state from north to south, number two fence is smaller and further west, and number three fence is smaller still and runs east-west. The fences took six years to build. When completed in 1907, the rabbit-proof fence including all three fences stretched 2,023 miles 3, the cost to build the fences at the time was about £167 per mile $250 per kilometer. .When it was completed in 1907, the 1,139-mile 1 number one fence was the longest unbroken fence in the world. topic history Rabbits were introduced to Australia by the First Fleet in 1788, but they became a problem after October 1859, when Thomas Austin released 24 wild rabbits from England for hunting purposes on his property near Winchelsea, Victoria. He felt that the introduction of a few rabbits could do little harm and might provide a touch of home, in addition to a spot of hunting." The rabbits proved to be extremely prolific, and spread rapidly across the southern parts of the country. Australia had ideal conditions for an explosion in the rabbit population, including the fact that they had virtually no local predators. By 1887, losses from rabbit damage compelled the New South Wales government to offer a £25,000 reward for any method of success not previously known in the colony for the effectual extermination of rabbits. A royal commission was held in 1901 to investigate the situation. topic construction The fence posts are placed 12 feet 3.7 meters apart and have a minimum diameter of 4 in 100 millimeters There were initially 3 wires of 12 and a half gauge strung 4 in 102 millimeters 1 foot 8 in 0.5 meters and 3 feet 0.9 meters above ground with a barbed wire added later at 3 feet 4 in 1.02 meters and a plain wire at 3 feet 7 in 1.1 meters to make the fence a barrier for dingoes and foxes as well Wire netting, extending 6 in 150 mm below ground, was attached to the wire. The fence was constructed with a variety of materials, according to the local climate and availability of wood. At first, fence posts were made from salmon gum and gimlet, but they attracted termites locally known as white ants and had to be replaced. Split white gum was one of the best types of wood used in the fence. Other timbers used were mulga, wadjal, native pine, and tea tree, depending on what could be found close to where the fence was to be built. Iron posts were used where there was no wood. 
most materials had to be hauled hundreds of kilometers from railheads and ports by bullock, mule and camel teams from 1901. The fence was constructed by private contractors, but in 1904, the project became the responsibility of the Public Works Department of Western Australia under the supervision of Richard John Ancatel. With a workforce of 120 men, 350 camels, 210 horses and 41 donkeys, Ancatel was responsible for the construction of the greater part of No. 1 fence and the survey of its last 70 miles 110 km. <laughs> Maintenance. Alexander Crawford took over the maintenance of the fence from Ancatel as each section was finished and remained in charge until he retired in 1922. The area inside the fence to the west became known as Crawford's Paddock. The fence was maintained at first by boundary riders riding bicycles and later by riders astride camels. However, fence inspection was difficult from atop the tall animal. In 1910, a car was bought for fence inspection, but it was subject to punctured tires. It was found the best way to inspect the fence was using buckboard buggies, pulled by two camels. The camels were used as pack animals, especially in the north, while in the south, camels were used to pull drays with supplies for the riders. Camels were ideal for this as they could go for a long time without water, and it has been suggested that the fence could not have been built or maintained without the use of camels. In addition to Crawford, there were four sub inspectors, each responsible for about 500 miles of fence, and 25 boundary riders who regularly patrolled 100 mile. Kilometers sections of fence. Due to frontier violence in the north of the state, a 300-mile section of No. 1 fence was patrolled by riders in pairs. Crawford was responsible for eliminating rabbits which had breached the fence. In the first year following the fence's completion, rabbit colonies were found and killed at several locations inside the fence, including sites near Carew, Mullawa, and Northampton. Following the introduction of myxomatosis to control rabbits in the 1950s, the importance of the rabbit proof fence diminished. Intersection with railway system Number 1 fence intersected the railway lines at Eastern Railway near Burracopin Wylecatcham, Southern Cross Railway at Campion Sandstone Branch Railway, just west of Ancatel Mikathara, Waluna Railway, at Peruno, two fence intersected with most of the Wheatbelt Railway lines of Western Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere in Australia The Darling Downs Morton Rabbit Board Fence is a rabbit fence that extends along part of the Queensland New South Wales border. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Cultural references. In 1929, Arthur Upfield, an Australian writer who had previously worked on the construction of No. 1 Fence, began writing a fictional story which involved a way of disposing of a body in the desert. Before the book was published, Stockman Snowy Rolls, an acquaintance of the writers, 
carried out at least two murders and disposed of the bodies using the method described in the book. The trial which followed in 1932 was one of the most sensational in the history of Western Australia. A book was published about the incident called Murder on the Rabbit Proof Fence, the strange case of Arthur Upfield and Snowy Rolls. The incident is now referred to as the Murchison Murders. Doris Pilkington Garrymara's book, Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence 1996, describes the use of the fence in the 1930s by three Indigenous Australian girls to guide their route back home to Jigalong. The girls, taken from their parents in Western Australia as part of the Stolen Generations, escaped from the Moor River native settlement where they were being held and walked back to their family at Jigalong by following the rabbit-proof fence. The dramatic film Rabbit Proof Fence 2002 is based on the book. In 2016, Englishwoman Lindsay Cole walked the fence from Moore River Settlement, 1,600 km through to Jigalong. She was met by Doris's daughter at the end of the walk in September 2016. See also Agricultural fencing Dingo fence Rabbits in Australia Notes <laughs> <laughs>